Good afternoon. If you are registered for the IEC 61439-1 and IEC 61439-2 overview series of webinars, you are in the right place. Today's topic will cover concept of IEC 61439 switchboard standard reference to performance verification. My name is Patrick and I'm the ASEAN Sales Manager for UL Energy Power Technology, also known as EPT for ASEAN region, and I will be your moderators for today's webinar. I will also be assisting our presenter, Mr. Raghu Ragunan, also known as Raghu, with some parts of the webinar. I will first like to explain how this webinar will be conducted. You will be listening to the webinar using your computer speakers. You may submit questions at any time during the presentation by typing your questions in the chat panel or on the bottom left of the screen and hitting send. We will answer as many questions as time allows. If we do not get to your question, we will follow up with you. Additionally, the webinar is being recorded and the link will be sent out in an email. Today, webinar focus on IEC 61439-1 and IEC 61439-2 overview, concept of IEC 61439 switchboard standard. This standard plays an important role in the services UL provides for evaluating and certifying your low voltage switch gear. Now, I would like to introduce our presenter, Mr. Ragu, engineering leader for Middle East and North Africa region. Ragu has 30 years of experience handling international certification for electrical products and is our engineering leader for UL, Middle East and North Africa region based in Dubai. His past experience include working with CSA International, Intertech and Tooth Ryland in various leading global positions. He is well established in global certification requirements and is leading you out with testing and reviewing work for IEC 61439 requirements. Now, I will turn the presentation over to Raghu. Thank you, Patrick. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the participants. Thanks for participating of the second webinar series on IEC 61439, part one and part two for the switchboard. Session objective, today we are discussing about the performance requirements and I'm going to give some tips on the optimization of switchboard test plan. Maybe some case studies we can discuss followed by Q and A. Basically, these seminars required a full day session. I tried to manage within one hour. Hence, maybe I need to speed up some area where we can explain in detail later. I have some key questions during last webinar. I try to answer first quickly. First question is clearance and prepaid distances not for easy movement at home. My as I clearly mentioned during my last webinar, I am giving home, father, mother, kids as an illustration purpose, not for technical purpose. To keep the characters in our mind so that no, we will follow the standard easy. Throughout my presentations, I try to link the technical points of the standard into our regular daily life so that you will remember those key points. Technically, clearance and prepaid distances are very important to avoid short circuit between the phase, phase to phase, phase to neutral, phase to ground, and also ensure that dielectric HV test to be cleared during the testing. Basically, that clearance and prepaid basically very, very important to maintain within the switchboard and to ensure it is there is no short circuit or there is no dielectric failure. Okay. What I mentioned as a easy moment at home is only for reference. If you see the right side, for clearance and prepaid distances, we required what is the insulation voltage of the switchboard, what is the impulse voltage of the switchboard, material group, and pollution degree. Based on that above, 
table 1 and table 2 provide us what is the minimum requirement of clearance and creepage we need to maintain inside the switchboard that will be measured during evaluation hope i answer this question next question is what will be the effect of more giants in bus bar always giants is nothing but a weaker section because of the workmanship if there is a problem in the joint which is causing a huge problem during temperature rise and short circuit test in switchboard there are two types of construction described one is extendable switchboard second one is non extendable switchboard under extendable switchboard it is mandatory to build one joint with a length of 2 meters because we ensure the joint take care of temperature rise and short circuit withstand during the test hence many joints fail during temperature rise and even short circuit and joints are very very important for extendable purpose if it is non extendable no joints required but joints definitely made a crucial role in switchboard it's very very important next question you asked very very important question what is the difference between switchboard and switch gear as you are aware earlier standards discussed about partially type tested fully type tested assemblies there was a confusion hence iec 61439 comes out with only one line low voltage switch gear and control gear assemblies means lv panel under this standard intended to be used for generation transmission distribution conversion of electrical energy those equipments coming under switchboard switchboard is a panel basically inside the components are switch gear or control gear means it can switch the output power or can control the equipment connected to the switchboard simple english is very funny in iec standard to understand switch gear switching the component control gear controls the unit from the outside i can give you again one more classic example in a car you assume assume that it's a switchboard there is a gear inside you need to put gear on to move the car right same way switchboard is a switchboard is a car where switch gear mccb we need to switch on to get the power means here gear switch is switch gear is a mccb acb contactors vdf vdf starters everything acts like either switch gear or control gear hope these three questions uh, you i answered and recap from 5th august who are not participated i given only like, only illustration switchboard nothing but our home those in, information i already given to you in my first webinar i compare the incomer breaker horizontal bus bar feeders as our family father mother and kids and home concept i already explained neatly in my first webinar and again i clearly mentioned how to protect my home same way i need to protect switchboard by dust rain heat free from electric shock and short circuit protection which is explained in iec 61439 annexure d this also we explained last seminar under last seminar we already discussed about the construction verification that is resistant to corrosion thermal stability resistance to abnormal heat and fire resistance to uv lifting mechanical impact and marking all these thing all these a to f refers to constructional part of the switchboard and additionally we discussed about degree of protection clearance and creepage protection against electric shock and integrity of protective circuit incorporation of switching devices and components internal electric circuits and connections terminal for external conductors total eight tests we already discussed during last webinar under construction verification so we already discussed one thing i missed it out which is very very important especially in iec that is called form of separation there is a big question to every manufacturer 
sir how to understand this form of separation again i am going to give you an illustration to for easy understand switchboard with form of separation as i mentioned to you key elements in switchboard is father mother kids nothing but incomer main bus bar and the feeders so if everybody together they are in one form correct so simply is i want to bifurcate them into i want to separate them so that no that becomes form of separation i think you are very easily understand now okay so i ensure that how i making them separate that is my form of separation okay let me see how easily you can understand this see refer this horizontal bus bar or vertical bus bar i already told its mother father and kids are the incomer and are functional units the same illustration given in annexure a a of the iec enclosure and internal separation see this beautifully you can understand this if everyone father mother kids everybody is in the one one studio or one room there is no internal separation see this how beautifully you can understand is everybody is one room or one home one chamber there is no internal separation everybody can reach anywhere means i can reach horizontal bus bar i can need to adjacent room everywhere i can go around this refers to form one separation you can see the refer reference picture right side there is no separation there it is form one separation clear yes. means horizontal bus bar or maybe feeders and outgoing connections everything is in a one room next one is very very simple and i think now you understood very easily form 2a you see here only incoming terminals of the terminals separated from the bus bar outgoing still accessible to the main bus bar correct so only incoming terminal separated by this but outgoing still reachable means terminals not separated from bus bar it is form 2a here even the outgoing terminal is also separated means it's a form 2b means incoming terminals and outgoing terminals separate by the main bus bar constitute form 2b i think it's very easy to understand now clear next same way 3a terminals not separated from bus bar and terminal for external conductors was separated from bus bar means even here the terminals of the external also separated okay so form 3a terminals not separate from the bus bar form 3b terminals and external conductors together separated from main bus bar clear it's very very simple how i am go on make them isolation form of separation go on increasing okay that's what you are seeing here form 4 is very very simple this is more critical form 4a terminals in same compartment in associated functional unit you see here in form 3 there is no compartment separate here you see compartment also separate associate functional units under form 4b terminals not in same compartment you see there outside also it is blocked terminals not in same compartment as associate function unit so basically i am go on isolating each part of the breakers as per the requirement that refers to form of separation i think you are now easily understood how i am go on making the separate rooms for individuals that go on increasing the form of separation okay this is very very important to understand under form of separation okay now hope this clear for you and today we discuss the test performance and our part of the standard reference to annexure d of iec 61439-1 okay so list of performance test we are discussing today dielectric properties in that dielectric means there are two tests are very very important one is hv test high voltage test second one is impulse voltage test and followed by temperature rise limits followed by short circuit withstand strength test followed by electromagnetic compatibility and followed by mechanical operations 
So these are coming under performance verification of the switchboard. Okay, we discuss one by one now. Basically, in dielectric properties, as I mentioned to you guys in earlier slides, it's very very important that for the insulation voltage of the switchboard is very very important role to consider the power frequency withstand voltage rating means example table 8 of the iec 61439 talks about the value for the dielectric test voltage example ui start from 60 volts to 1000 by 500 volts there is a test in dc or test in ac also if you refer table 8 it talks about the test required for dielectric test that is 9 10.9.2 how we apply it is very very easy between all life parts of the main circuit connected together between each life part and different potential maybe if we have control circuit between each control and auxiliary circuit will be tested for the dielectric test nothing but high voltage test for the duration of 5 seconds reference to table 8 of the iec 61439-1 after this test next test is 10.9.3 is impulse withstand voltage test impulse withstand voltage test refers to again table 10 table 10 specify what is the impulse voltage i need to apply basically why i need to refer table 10 is because of the c level because each test stations has a different c levels so based on c level the impulse voltage may be changed as per table 10 so basically same way we are going to apply as i mentioned to you for dielectric test here we apply five positive and five negative shots again between all life parts of different potential again between each life part and different potential and between each control and auxiliary circuits we are applicable means power frequency voltage based on insulation voltage don't forget this hence we are always asking for the switchboard what is the insulation voltage which is required for us for the power frequency voltage test value impulse voltage again to see what is the impulse voltage i need to apply based on the c level and another two tests are very very important i think which is missing in many of the reports one is if testing is test for enclosures if the enclosure is made of insulating material don't forget this example the material the enclosure is made of grp or any insulating material then you have to apply 1.5 times the value indicated in table 8 don't forget this only when the enclosure is made of insulating material and 90 percent i seen this 10.9.5 will be missed out in many reports this is required for the external operating handles of insulating material example mccb you have a insulating material handle which is outside for the operation those handles has to have 1.5 times the test voltage as per table 8 we need to apply so don't forget this this is very very important while doing the testing under 10.9.5 the external operating handles of the insulating material of the switchboard has to undergo 1.5 times the values indicated in table 8 as a dielectric test we need to test and it has to qualify so these four tests are very very important under dielectric properties under 10.9 normally you see this is high voltage tester and this is impulse voltage tester now this is very very important and main test under switchboard under performance is temperature rise limits refers to class 10.10 there are three temperature rise test methods 
specified in IEC 61439-1. Method A by testing. Method B by derivation. Maybe you are already tested the design by de derivation or by similar variants, you can calculate what is the temperature rise limits. You can calculate it by derivation. Method C is by calculation method. But for certification purpose, all agencies we use only method A by testing refers to 10.10.2. So today is very, very important part of the seminar. We discuss 10.10.2 applicable by testing method for the temperature rise. Again, in 10.10.2, there are three test methods given. Please understand this very, very carefully. Test method A refers to 10.10.2.3.5. This refers to verification of complete assembly with rated diversity factor 1. Don't forget this. This rated diversity factor is one of the main role in switchboard. For your easy understanding, rated diversity factor means what is the rated current you are declared? Same current we are going to test during temperature rise without applying rated diversity factor. Again, English funny here. How to understand this? Rated diversity. I am diversification the current. Rated diversity factor. How much I am taking diversity? That you have to define by the manufacturer. You are not taking any diversity in your factor. It is considered as one don't get confused here means test method a refers to rated diversity factor one and it's always easy and cost effective also because it go in only one testing okay and test method b refers to class 10.10.2.3.6 verification considering individual units separately and the complete assembly Problem here is when you are considered or declared rated diversity factor less than one, then we need to test with the diversity factor full for the full assembly, followed by outgoing feeders separately with the rated current. Means there are many testing going to happen when you choose rated diversity factor below one. Please note this, my dear friends. Rated diversity factors is not applicable to the main incomer. It's only for the outgoing feeders. Means test method A, full assembly with RDF1. Test method B, when you declare rated diversity factor below 1. And test method C is very, very important. Verification considering individual functional units and main and distribution bus bar. Basically, it is method B, what I mentioned, plus main and distribution bus bar. Example, in switchboard, main horizontal bus bar, you declared a separate rating, then 10, 10, 2, 3, 7, I need to apply. Or sometimes manufacturers declare different ratings for the vertical bus bar also. Then I need to choose 10, 10, 2, 3, 7, A, B, C sections under the IEC 61439. Popular method and adopt by all the manufacturer is test method A with RDF1 class number 10, 10, 2, 3, 5. Clear? This is how setup looks like. Now, always there is a question during temperature rise. Because as I mentioned to you, table number 6 of IEC 61439, the limits are given in degree Kelvin. There is always confusion. What is degree centigrade and what is degree Kelvin? Because the table 6 refers the limit in Kelvin, not in degree centigrade. Please understand this before I move to the actual testing. So degree centigrade is what is the absolute value you measured 
at the thermocouple junction which you fixed on the switchboard that is in degree centigrade if you want to get the kelvin value you have to deduct the ambient temperature or average ambient temperature from the degree centigrade don't get confused very very important to understand degree centigrade is the absolute value what you measured kelvin temperature is the delta t that is nothing but after deducting the average ambient temperature let me take an example here we measured an absolute temperature of 95 degree centigrade at a specified point at the average temperature of 25 degree centigrade in this case what is degree centigrade and what is k 95 degree centigrade is absolute temperature if i deduct 95 degree centigrade with minus 25 degree centigrade average temperature average ambient temperature what i am getting is 70k that is k value is very very important many people always confused between degree centigrade and degree kelvin and there is one more clarification always i am going to explain here whenever we discussed how how this one uh, uh, whenever we discussed the temperature more than the average temperature how to evaluate the temperature limits example please note this iec 61439 table number 6 limits are given in kelvin refers to average ambient of 35 degree and maximum ambient of 40 degree whenever we need to consider above those average ambient of 35 degree how to calculate so here is the small example i am going to show here assume that from the table 6 terminals for external insulated conductors limit is given 70k okay means the 70k refers to 35 degree average 40 degree maximum clear what you want to calculate 50 degree average 55 degree maximum so i mentioned to subtract 15k that correction factor you get by deducting average ambient of 50 degree which you are going to calculate reference to average ambient of 35 degree as per table 6 reference 50 minus 35 degree that is 15k is the correction factor if you are going to calculate the temperature limits for 50 degree centigrade whatever the limits given in table 6 if you deduct by 15k the particular value refers to 50 degree average ambient 55 degree maximum ambient example 70k minus 15k 55k i need to consider for the terminals for external insulated conductors when i calculate for 50 degree average ambient okay don't get confused this is apply for whenever you are going to make elevated temperature above 35 degree average and i'm going to give some tips also today's call temperature limits tips for terminal designs terminal design of switchboard normally people go with horizontal vertical horizontal plus vertical commonly used horizontal always a bad because it pumps up more heat generate inside the compartment vertical always good because heat is easily flow means air flow is very very easy so it can take up the heat very easily but normally commonly used combination is horizontal plus vertical combination acb vertical terminals give better temperature rise than horizontal terminals just only tips i am going to give workmanship for the bus bar for the horizontal orientation easier compared to vertical but advantage is vertical orientation bus bar generates some heat but also cools switch gate terminals 
bus bar is very very important is what it takes up heat from the terminal of the switch gear always keep this in note top terminal y face nothing but center face is the hottest point during the temperature rise test again one more tips how to reduce the heat from the switch board there are many options by using heat sink by using proper bus bar size very very important keeping ip rating minimum minimum ip rating good in air flow inside the switch board by using bigger compartment good ventilation suitable form of separation i think i already explained to you more form of separation risk of more heat suffocation basically for the switch board inside the compartment post ventilation by using pan emissivity this is very very important part block body radiation for the bus bar with block paint also helps this is some tips how to reduce the heat from the switch board some more tips if failure temperature during temperature rise how to calculate suitable current to pass the test this is only rough estimate my dear guys example normally when you are in the test bay where your product is failing during temperature rise you need to take a quick call what may be the current it can pass example i am giving you if one point you measure 95k where you required a limit of temperature rise to pass is only 80k this example the switchboard rating is 3200 amperes for rough calculation again i am saying to you this is not actual calculation we can use the formula t1 by t2 is equal to i1 by i2 power of 1.7 with this example with a test current of 3200 amperes maximum temperature you observed is 95k required limit you want at the terminal is 80k for the calculation purpose if i consider 79k is the limit i want it if you place these values into this formula 79 divided by 95 is equal to x divided by 3200 power of 1.7 you get the value of 2871 amps means to achieve 79 to 80k switchboard to be derated to 2871 amps instead of 3200 amps based on the manufacturer maybe you can take care actions based on this oh 2871 may may be the correct current or manufacturer can take some corrective action to make it 3200 amp to pass basically this required for the manufacturers to take quick call during the testing of the switchboard at test bay for easy references again i mentioned to you this is of calculation now let me take a case study now i am take you through all methods with this case study okay means i am going to explain how the different methods test method a test method b test method c we can derive with this example this is a 400 amp switchboard maybe we call it as main distribution board with the incomer of 4000 amperes and there are three vertical bus bar maybe three compartments first compartment with 600 400 800 amperes feeders second compartment with 200 amps and 100 amps feeders third compartment with 600 700 and 1000 amperes feeders means first vertical sum is 1800 amperes second vertical 300 amperes third vertical 2300 amperes first test under test method a means rdf1 means whatever the current declared in the picture example number 1 we are going to pass under method a this is rated diversity factor 1 because 4000 amperes is the incomer the sum of the current is more than 1000 4000 amperes because if you sum the total current the feeder 
it is coming 4400 amperes hence i can't pass rated current for all the feeders correct that not mandatory that incomer sum incomer rating sum of the feeders should be equal i already mentioned this even though it is more than incomer total current but my incomer rating is fixed for the bus for the switchboard here is first test what i will do i will pass the current column one column two column three where i will only pass 600 amps in the 1000 amps feeder to ensure total 4000 amperes flown through the feeders through the switchboard because 1000 amps not tested fully for the 1000 amperes rating i am go with second test means two tests going to happen here same again input 4000 amperes i will do again i am going to do one column one column two column three now what i will do just column one 400 amperes breaker i'll switch off so that 1000 amps fully loaded again the total sum if i switch off the 400 amperes feeders total current again flow 4000 amperes so that by test number one and test number two all the breakers all the feeders tested with rated current declared by the manufacturer this is method a 10.10.2.3.5 clear now means ensure that whatever the rated current declared by the manufacturer has to be tested depending upon the income or operating of the switchboard income rating never change it's always 4000 in this case ensure that with 4000 what are the maximum feeders i can load if it is exceed i want to run one more test i think this give a good example for you to understand test method b assume that manufacturer declared 0.85 amps means if you calculate the total sum of 4400 into 0.85 rdf the total current comes to me is 3740 amps means again i said to you i need to again i clearly mentioned incomer breaker we will not apply any rated diversity factor income are always loaded with actual current of 4000 amperes in this case and all the outgoing we are going to feed only 85 percent of the declared current because rdf declared here is 0.85 so what we do income are 4000 amperes all the outgoing feeders we pass through with 0.85 the total sum of the current is 3740 amps means 3740 amps is the total sum of the current with rd of 0.85 still we have a 260 amps because in comer we are flowing through 4000 amperes after we float 3740 amps remaining 260 amps we just spill through the horizontal bus bar so that with rdf under class number 10.10.2.3.6 we test with rdf followed by we need to test individual breaker individual feeders with the rated current don't forget this this is that's what i mentioned to you test method b is going to be expensive because one test like 10 10 2 3 5 same way here but with rdf followed by individual breaker as per the declared rated current at that time we pass actual current not rdf current this is 10 10 2 3 6 method next is test method c as i mentioned to you after the test method b with rdf we need to follow for the horizontal bus bar whatever rating 4000 amperes if manufacturer declare vertical also we are going to test with whatever declared current example here the manufacturer declared 1600 amps 800 amps 2400 amps as the vertical rating these three also going to be tested individually or together depending upon manufacturer acceptability now it, you are very much clear now how to understand test method a with rdf1 
as per the declared current without any deviation. Test method B with the RDF 101236 we follow here as per the declared rated diversity factor. Test method C basically for the horizontal mainly and distribution bus bar along with complete assembly means as I mentioned to you test method A is very very easy to conduct and cost effective correct. So if you apply test method B tests are going to be jump like anything when is complete assembly plus individual feeders it's going to be more testing more cost always choose test method A with RD of one more cost effective. Now I think very much clear in temperature rise test method A test method B test method C under 10.10.2 test method only we are going to follow during our type examination certificate clear can I take a small quick understand what you understood now as I mentioned to you calculate the below data, uh, data tested with normal ambient don't forget all these values for normal ambient as per the table six limits can you tell me what is the limit for 50 degree ambient I need to calculate can I take only few seconds so again I'm repeating this value is as per the table six refers to 35 degree average and the limit are in Kelvin now I need to calculate 50 degree average then what is the limit going to be hope you're already understood correction factor I already mentioned 50 minus 35 is 15 K I need to deduct from this then the limit becomes 80 become 65 70 become 55 105 become 90 40 become 25 I think now it's easily understood for you guys clear fantastic now this talk about temperature rise calculations and the limits how to choose as per the table six next very very important chapter for us is short circuit in switchboard there are only two types of short circuit one is icw refers to start time withstand current test second one is icc conditional short circuit rating test again i'm telling you funny things in standard please understand the english in easy way short time withstand term is very much clear short time withstand short time means what time you should ask whenever the english asking short time what time we stand how much we stand means the test itself clearly mentioned switchboard has to withstand short time short time means you have to have a time duration correct very very easy to understand the terms of the IEC standard short time we stand short time means there is a duration correct what time i need how much time i need to withstand hey you have to withstand short time here okay yeah i'm ready to withstand given it duration means whenever the manufacturer choose the short time withstand current test now you understood that will be with a duration correct very easy to understand and short time withstand current test again we go with three phase because we talk about only four parameters in switchboard my dear guys three phase neutral ground nothing else in the switchboard three phase ryp or l1 l2 l3 plus neutral plus pe conductor means for the short circuit also we need to consider all three phase ryb or l1 l2 l3 plus neutral plus productive conduct whenever short time duration test coming to picture now you understood you have to ask what is the duration i need to apply very very important in short time stand current test is 
the duration plus peak value means table 7 of the iec 61439 talks about n factor nothing but peak factor means first peak because short time which means whenever short circuit happen the first peak is always higher correct so as per the declared short time stand current test by the manufacturer table 7 clearly given what is the peak value i need to consider during the short time stand current test this is a, this is the difference between us standard and iec standards here we are not worried about the rated voltage under short time withstand current test minimum 80 voltage 80 volts is more than sufficient even though you get the required current and the peak current under short time withstand current test don't forget this short time withstand current test means refers to short time the duration withstand is capacity of withstand again table 7 provide you the value for the peak current next term is conditional short circuit rating what is this again it clearly mentioned conditional means there is a condition provide now you to understood tell me boss what is the condition I need to meet means short circuit is okay but there should be a conditional short circuit what condition we don't understood in short time instant current they never mentioned conditional here they mentioned conditional what condition here is these conditions are to understand by the standard the rated short circuit current has to be with 1.5 times the rated voltage is the condition in above i said minimum 80 volts also okay you can there it's only current and the peak is important but in conditional short circuit test that is icc one you have to maintain the rated voltage 1.5 times plus power factor is very very important again table 7 provide you what is the power factor additionally to this there are many conditions to meet breaker performance after conditional short circuit test to be tested and verified after the conditional short circuit rating test even though dielectric test we do after conditional short circuit rating test after the test now you understood in iec terms we talk about only two types one is rated short time withstand current test short time withstand current test means there is a duration there is a peak value conditional short circuit test means there is a condition required to meet that is rated voltage rated power factor as per table 7 plus the additional 1.4 times the rated voltage conditions given in the standard has to meet during icc rating test these three these two testing again i'm going to tell you we are going to apply for three phase phase plus neutral and phase plus protective earth so we are playing around only these four parameters three phase neutral and earth bar short circuit also going to happen for all four characters three phase bus bar neutral bus bar protective earth bus bar so don't forget under short circuit short time stand current that is icw conditional short circuit current test icc okay there is a tolerances just for reference only don't get more confused on this we are allowed to have a tolerance of plus 10 percent on the voltage and current spread is very very important current is minus zero percent don't get do you are not allowed to go average current of minus there is no minus tolerance only plus side is the tolerance and peak 2.1 percent is the tolerance again plus side these are the only tolerances during short circuit values don't get more confusion here what because this is test lab know these tolerances during the prospective test which they are going to perform before main test now some of the faqs 
I'm going to answer here. During short circuit test, if MCCB not clear the fault, what is the effect on the switchboard? This is a very, very good question, right? But if by mistake, the MCCB is not operates, what can happen? Door can fly, door can open, maybe loss of IV protection, because after short circuit test, this is normally happen under conditional short circuit only. In we stand, not much problem. In conditional short circuit test, always problem because of the I square T and there is a huge arc happening. IP can be, maybe door can be opened, but IP has to meet. Maybe that cause failure of HV, as I mentioned to you, as a condition after the short circuit test, we do the HV test. If HV fail also, fail of the short circuit. This is very, very important for you to keep in remember because only short circuit pass is not meeting the requirement. After short circuit, HV test has to pass. Due to breaker failure, arcing fault in line terminal, fine made fuse may operate, MCCP can get weld, breaking the supports of the main bus bar, fail to clear the fault, transfer the fault to vertical bus bar. Many times happens, you see the pictures, MCCB failure causing problem of the bus bar and toggle of the handle not correctly open because after the short circuit test, the MCCB has to be operated from the external handle on of operations. The MCCB handle not to trip position. Sometimes it's only locked in on positions, welded contacts. Many things can happen if MCCB breaker not clear the fault. Okay. This is very, very important. By keeping I square T, many questions coming to me. Can we assign a different short circuit rating? Example I can going to give you. This may be more technical. If the product ICW tested for 80K of one second, where based on 80K of one second results, can manufacturer declare by the testing authority for 50K rating? Yes, it's possible if we meet the peak value. Because 80K peak value is more than 50K. If you use this formula, example, 80K already tested for one second, that is I square T, 80 square into one. And I want to declare a new rating for 50K, that is 50 square into X, you get 2.56 seconds. Means if the switchboard main bus power tested for 80K a one second, we can give you a dual rating 50K for 2.56 seconds also without testing because 80K a one second also meets 50K for 2.56 seconds, but not vice versa. Please you can ask, sir, 50K a 2.56 seconds. Can I make 80K for one second? Understand this. 50K a peak is only 2.2 times, maybe 105 kilo amperes, but 80K a peak 2.2 times is more than 105 kilo amperes. If you meet 50K a 2.56 seconds with a peak of 80K, a, it is possible. Otherwise, vice versa is not possible. But in this case, it's possible because 80K a peak already taking care of 50K a peak value. Okay, next is EMC verification. This is very, very important. EMC means only two things, my dear guys. Immunity, emission. Can I give you a classic example? The situation what we are in COVID, is a classic example for EMC testing. Because in COVID, we talk about how much you are immunity, and how much you can emit the COVID to others, correct? Same example I can tell you. In switchboard, how much immunity switchboard can tolerate external emissions? Because in external environment, there are many, many electronic products are operating that flow more emission to the switchboard. Can that switchboard has immunity to withstand that? Number one, like COVID. Can I have immunity to withstand that? Otherwise, how much I can emit within the enclosure, within the switchboard, 
how much electronic components emit the emission outside these two are the main test under emc one is immunity and one is emission basically this can be verified based on the verification of the certificates example in the switchboard where the components has electronic in nature where the components nature of the emission only we need to verify for emission and immunity if they have a certificates to show this is already certified for the particular immunity level and emission level we will not do the testing for emc we accept by verification final is mechanical operations why required after 20 operations if the handles or the door come to handle then what you will do means maybe during short circuit test sometimes door fly off correct mechanical joints is very very important for the switchboard correct all enclosures or partitions including locking system means it has a hinges door shall be mechanically strength sufficient to withstand the stresses during the testing example some short circuit happens that's what i'm explained to you during the short circuit test if breaker not operates it can pass the force to the door door can fly off hence mechanical strength of the door hinges and the assembly and switchboard construction is very very important it has to be more rigid in nature to withstand the short circuit conditions to withstand all the possible strength mechanical impact that's what basically has to withstand hence the mechanical operations test is very very important for the assembly doors hinges locking system where standard specified mechanical operations for the removal parts including any insertion interlock verified according to class 10.1.3 we are going to do 200 mechanical op operations as per the standard so with this with all the performance test requirements i try to explain now there are many other questions also we'll discuss now faqs under the switchboard can we cover six ways eight ways 10 ways 16 ways under one test report and certificate yes possible means is it the next question is then we need to build six way eight way 10 way 16 way different panels for testing no required optimize the test plan to cover the total range of 6 to 16 way okay but optimize how to do you have to contact ul we can provide you optimization of the test plan as per the ec standard customer declared inc test current correct for the outgoing feeders can we make maximum rating as best optimization yes possible refer the case study examples let me see the example if you are using there are two op options you are going to use one option is only use one type of breaker option to use different type of breakers different frame size refer the example a company abc have x type with 10 to 100 amps and 100 amps frame 160 amp frame 250 amp frame and y type again 16 to 100 amps 80 to 160 amps 250 frame 125 to 250 amps you can choose only x type breakers or you can combinationly you can x and y type so that no more optimize okay same way for company cba there are three frame size with a and b type you can use only a type breakers or you can make optimization to take a more advantage by using a and b type choose the breaker as per the demand that is important always higher the icc rating of the breaker higher is the cost of the breaker don't forget it don't leave simply you can't choose 80k a breaker because cost also very very important role while designing the 
assembly. Hence, depending on the optimize, you have to sit with UL engineering team with an engineering drawing. We can provide you optimized solution. What is the best optimized plan? We can test to cover the different ways of the switchboard under one certification. Next, switchboard with different frame size with vertical horizontal orientation. Is some of the outgoing always equal to less than incomer? The same case I already mentioned in that incomer rating is 4000 outgoing sum is 4400 amps. So it's not mandatory to have incomer rating and some of the outgoing feeders should be same. Okay, depending upon the INC rating, optimization is possible. What is total current? Of the outgoing feeders, depending upon the you can INC also you can declare not, not only RDF, you can also declare rated test current as per your requirement. Again, it's optimization that we discuss one to one with manufacturers once you submit the engineering drawing to us. You can see this 250 amp six way and 16 way we can discuss under one certification, optimization is possible. Next, switchboard 6 to 16 where I mentioned to you, temperature is the main key. We may talk about lower enclosure size, or maybe you can talk about highest frame size for small enclosure, ICW for the highest vertical bus bar, all the optimization possible. Again, keynote, final test plan is based on the breaker orientation you are using, and the rating you selected by the manufacturer, it may demand additional temperature rise, and charge, charge, charge to test it means if you want to cover from 4 to 16 way you have to sit with ul there is the optimized test plan we can generate based on your construction and number of type of breaker you are going to use refer this in the switchboard different frame size with orientation of vertical horizontal used by the manufacturer definitely possible with ul we can maybe we can develop a optimum test plan for the manufacturers thank you very much hope you enjoyed this session and next session is very very important we are discussing about ic61439 edition 1 edition 2 updates now how to ensure your certificate and report is to be accurate to meet the international standards and local utilities requirements please contact your other colleagues be part of the next session because we are discussing with the latest edition of the 61439 1 and 2 Q&A. Thank you once again for all the participants. Hope you enjoyed this session because it's a one day session. I try to accommodate within one hour. Definitely we are open to hear all the clarification questions from each one of you you can reach out our team so that we can answer or we can come and personally meet every manufacturers as per your requirements based on iec standards thank you very much patrick is your term now thank you ragu thank you ragu for the wealth of knowledge that you share with attendees thank you so much at this time, at this time, we have some questions from the floor. I will post the first question, Raghu. Um, one of the participants asked, how do we identify the need for EMC testing? Uh, Raghu? Thank you. Very good question. I think I already answered this during the presentation. EMC refers to electromagnetic compatibility. As I mentioned to you, a COVID example, every switchboard also has to have two things. One is immunity and emission. There are two types of environment testing refers to IEC 61439. Annexure J talks about one is environmental A. It is power network related to high end medium voltage. Environmental B refers to low voltage public network based on this category we are going to test emission and immunity for the switchboard again i mentioned to you this only we verified if the components 
which are in nature of emitting the electronic emissions undergo emc testing or else if the components already tested and verified for the emc we ask only a certificate for verification with that we are not going to do any testing so how to identify only you to manufacture to verify is the component already certified to emc verification for immunity and emission if not we need to test for emc testing immunity and emission as per annexure j thank you thank you thank you ragu for addressing the emc question uh, we have another question from one of the participants. Um, they would like to know, are there minimum requirements for short circuit rating? They've seen many different levels of rating, so do you want to know whether is there a requirement for that? Very good question. See, basically, short circuit rating is depending upon the end buyer or maybe consultants or maybe utilities. Because depending upon the utilities requirement, example, Normally, main distribution boards, maybe 50 kA, normally everybody using. Maybe SMDB, 36 kA to 25 kA. FDB, normally go with 10 to 17 kA. Basically, short circuit rating given in the standard is only for reference. This is totally depending upon the end user acceptance, utilities acceptance, and the regional acceptance. Depending upon that, manufacturer has to develop the switchboard suitable for their requirements. Of course, one more thing is below 10 kilo amperes, if manufacturer declared, there is no short circuit test required. It's exempted. Thank you. Thank you, Raghu. Thank you for addressing the short circuit rating. Um, I think we still have some time for the last question. Um, one participant asked, being based in the Middle East, can you share the requirement for switchboard there? I understand temperature rise test should be tested for 50 degrees ambient. Are there any differences as compared to Southeast Asia? Raghu? Yeah, very good question. Basically, in UAE, totally business driven by the local utilities. Things like Diva, Siva, ADQCC, many local utilities drive the business. Means each utility is having a different requirements for the switchboard. I can take you an example of Abu Dhabi Quality Council, Abu Dhabi Quality Center. Here, the minimum voltage requirement is 400 volts minimum. Normally, all the switchboard of IEC we talk about 450 nodes that is still acceptable but major thing is rated insulation voltage minimum is 690 volts we will not accept for the middle east below 690 volts insulation voltage it's minimum requirement and there is a limit requirement for the ip testing also ip 43 is minimum for main distribution board IP31 minimum for the SMDB and APFC panel. Additionally, short circuit. First question you asked, here is the answer. In this region, there is a minimum requirement of short circuit also addressed, means required by Abu Dhabi Quality Council. Example, main distribution board, minimum short time withstand current test. Value is 46 kilo amperes. Sub main distribution board SMDB required 25 kilo amperes for one second. FDB final distribution board required 17.5 kilo amps for 0.25 seconds. And busway required 50 kA for one second. Other than that, all the parameters requirements of IEC is same, no change. So anything specific, please reach out to me. I will send you the separate email to the manufacturers. Thank you. Thank you, Raghu. Thank you. Uh, we're running short of time. This is definitely, that was definitely the last question we had time for. 
Uh, thank you, Raghu. Thank you for the informative presentation and thank you for taking time out to participate in today's webinar. As we close the program, I would like to highlight that a link to the recorded webinar will be sent via email to all those who registered to attend. Please be reminded that there is a short survey for you participants to fill up so that we can serve you all better and seek improvement for our webinars. We hope you enjoy our webinar and highlight and I need to highlight that the third webinar for IEC 61439-1 and 2 will be held on 19th of August at the same time from 2 p.m. to 3.15 p.m. GMT plus 8 time zone. If you have registered for the webinars by default, you will be included in all the three webinars. Thank you so much and we hope you enjoyed the webinar and find it insightful. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you all.